Once you're done, you can click done, close everything out. Okay, that is the new application process if your instructor happens to be doing it this way. What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today we're going to be reviewing the new renewal and replacement process uh, once you've had your CWP class on how you're going to get your fingerprints done as well as get your paperwork submitted and this is a very very simple process. They've streamlined everything uh, so for anyone out there that's telling you that I'm doing it the incorrect way or it's not the right way, uh, they are wrong. This is a process SLED has changed over to, and it just makes things so much easier. So we're gonna get in here and get talking about this. It's a real easy process, and I'm gonna kind of step out of the way here so you can see everything. But as you can see here, you'll start on SLED CWP website. If you've had my class, this is linked in on your handout, as well as the follow-up email that I sent you after the class. Um, if you have not had anything with me, you can just go to Google or whatever search engine you want to use, type in SLED space CWP, S-L-E-D space bar CWP. And I think within the first two or three links there, it'll bring you up to their website. But now, just to make sure everybody understands, you cannot go through this until you have had your CWP class because there is information off of the paperwork that you're gonna get in the class that has to be filled out as well as turned in when you do your fingerprints. But again, to start out, you'll start on SLED's website here. Uh, as you can see, I've got it underlined right here. And this says CWP, new renewal or replacement process. So you'll come back here anytime you wanna do that. Once you click on that link, it's gonna bring you over here to this page. Now, what this is here is uh, kind of what they've changed their process to. If you wanna read through this notice, you're more than welcome to. But pretty much what they did back in 2021, I'm sorry, back in 2019, is they partnered with a company called Identigo. If you're not familiar with them, they do fingerprinting and stuff for everybody outside of law enforcement and military as well too. Uh, but this is where you're gonna be doing your fingerprints. They're gonna, like I said, they're gonna do your fingerprints and they're gonna take your paperwork, scan it, and they're gonna email everything over to SLED. But that's pretty much what this is explaining down here. If you wanna read it, read it. If not, you see the big Identigo button, you'll click that. And now it will bring you over here to Identigo's webpage. Now, if you've seen my old video of this, this is very different, okay? So they have changed the outlook on this and the process a little bit, and some of the steps are kind of shuffled around, but it's pretty much the same as my old video. But as you can see here, you're gonna click on schedule new appointment. Once you click on that, it's gonna bring you over here to this page. It's asking you for the agency ID. You're gonna hit the drop down, and you're gonna select concealed weapons permit. So this is one thing that changed from what they used to do. So make sure you select concealed weapons permit. You're gonna hit go down there or below it. It'll bring you here. If you're doing a new application, you'll select this first option. As you can see, new CWP application. Once you select that, hit go. It'll bring you over here to this page. All right, you need to read and answer these questions. Then you're gonna put your initials down there in the box in the lower left corner. One thing I wanna point out here, question four here. All right, I get a lot of questions about this particular question, just really because the way that it's worded, but this question is pretty, this question is pretty much asking, are you legal to own a firearm? All right, or legal to own or purchase a firearm is what that question is asking. The way it's worded, sometimes it does confuse people, just wanna kinda of go over that. But again, read and answer all of these, initials in the box, you'll hit go. Now, depending on what you're doing, here's your different options here. 
I will say this disabled veteran, there's no need to use it. Uh, the reason that was there is uh, there used to be processing fees for the new, the renewals and the replacements and disabled veterans got your processing for free. So that has changed once they started the new Open Carry with Training Act. So there are no more processing fees. The fee is just for the class. So you're either gonna select retired former military active military, retired former, retired law enforcement, active law enforcement, or none of the above. Now for most of my people that come in, it's none of the above. Once you select that, hit go. This is information off of the checklist. So this is paperwork that you're gonna get once you come and take the class. So this is why I say you, even if you try to do this, once you get here, you're not gonna have any of this information. You're not gonna be able to continue forward. So you, you have to take the class. Uh, quick note on that, don't sit around and wait for them to pass constitutional carry. Um, I'm not going to get a lot into that. Uh, I'll be doing a video on that coming up in the latter uh, my next couple of weeks or so. Um, but just don't wait on them to pass constitutional carry. There's no telling how long that's going to take. Get you a permit and be able to protect yourself. So this is information off of the checklist you received in class. If you have had a class with me, you know what I'm talking about. If you have not had a class with me or any other instructor, then this is why you're going to have to come and take the class. This is paperwork you're going to get in the class. Go through, fill everything out, hit go. Now it's going to give you a reminder of what you'll take with you when you do your fingerprints. So your driver's license, the checklist you were given in class, some other form of identification, passport, birth certificate, social security card, voter registration card, uh, utility bill, your name and address, or another government issued ID. They will not accept work or student IDs. It has to be another government issued ID. If you've had your class with me, this is right at the top of your handout, as well as in the follow-up email that I sent you. If you did not get that email, email me and I'll get that over to you. Uh, just simply hit go. You will have to agree to a background check. Yes, the man's gonna know you're getting a concealed carry permit. So agree to it, hit go. Now here's where you're gonna start to set your appointment. This looks a little different than what the old process used to be. Do not search by region. If you search by region, it's just gonna bring them all up. You wanna search by zip code. That way it will sort it closest to furthest. So punch in your zip code, hit go. Here you go. This is where it's gonna bring you. Now, if you're in my area here, there is a location in Easley, um, Greenville, actually two locations in Greenville, two locations in Anderson, and there's even one in Seneca, and there's more around the state as well too. This is just what popped up as closest to me when I was redoing this. Now, what you're looking for is over here on the right side. All right, you're looking for schedule. Now, if you notice, that's only on the Seneca location. Uh, what I will say about Easley, Anderson, and Seneca, and some of these other locations for Identigo, they are part-time, they're not always open. The main one is in Greenville, up off of Orchard Park. If you've ever been to Local Q, they're right across the parking lot from Local Q. If you don't know where I'm talking about, they do have their address on here, so you can use GPS. Now, as you see here, you've got schedule full, closed. So the main location is the Orchard Park location. If it's full, you're gonna have to hit next week and see what's available next week. Now, if you scroll down to the bottom of this, this is where you can start selecting and looking at other locations as well too. But if you wanna choose week, it's up here at the top. If you wanna choose locations, you gotta scroll down to the bottom of this page, okay? But once you select schedule, you're gonna go through and you're gonna pick whatever time is available or whatever time is best for you. It's gonna show you all the times they've got available for that location. Once you select it, you'll hit continue. Now you're gonna get your application. One thing I wanna point out with the applicant name here on this application, the applicant name has to match your driver's license. There is no give or take on that. They do confirm it with the DMV database. They can see that. So your applicant name has to match your driver's license. 
paperwork you filled out is not a big deal. This right here has to match your driver's license. Your alias, where it says applicant alias, that's one going to be where, ladies, you will put your maiden names. Two, this is also where you will put anything that you go by other than your first or your middle name. Now, I'm not talking about being Ron White and putting tater salad or whatever your buddies call you, scooter, skeeter, pooter, whatever. What I'm talking about here is if you go and look at my license and my legal name is Christopher, then that's what's on my license. So that's what I have to put up here. But I go by Chris. I don't go by Christopher. And that's how I introduce myself to everybody. All right. So technically in the eyes of the law, I have to put Chris and then my last name because Chris is technically my alias. Once you do that, you're either going to select resident or non-resident. Yes, if you are not a resident of South Carolina, you can get a non-resident concealed carry permit for South Carolina. But the catch here, you have to own property here in the state. It doesn't have to have a livable home on it or any type of structure, anything like that. You just have to own property here in the state of South Carolina to be able to get a non-resident permit. There's no way around that. Don't shoot the messenger. If you got issues with that, take it up with your law, the lawmakers here, call SLED and talk to them. Pick which one's appropriate for you. Most people are going to be a resident. Address is on your driver's license for the resident address. Mailing address is going to go down here if it's different. If it's not different, just check same as qualifying. It'll copy everything over for you. After that, you're going to need to put in a phone number. However you want to do it, home, sell, work, whatever you want to do. But then, as you can see right here and right here, you're given options on how you want to be contacted. So if you'd rather be emailed, select email, put in your email address. For the renewal notification, you get mail or email. So if you've got your mailing address up there, select mail. If you'd rather have it emailed, select email. Okay, but either way you want to be contacted, you still have to put in a phone number. Anything with a red star next to it, you might not be able to see it, but there are red stars next to what is required to be filled out. Or if you'd rather put in a second phone number, totally up to you on how you fill that out, but anything with a red star does have to be filled out. After you put in your contact info, how you want to be contacted, then you've got the last box here, which is your usual stuff, date of birth, gender, height, weight, race, ethnicity, hair color, eye color, place of birth, social, driver's license, and all that good stuff. Once you fill all this out, you will hit go in the bottom left corner. Now, when you hit go, if it kicks you back to this application, go back through the application, look for any boxes that might have a red exclamation mark next to it. That means you've missed something that is required to be filled out. If everything looks good when you hit go, it's going to bring you right here. And this is pretty much, I know it might be hard to see because I was trying to get everything on here with my screenshots, but this is pretty much the place you picked on your, where you want to go to do your fingerprints, time, date, address, all that good stuff, the application, make sure everything's good go all the stuff from your checklist confirm everything then you'll put your initials over in the bottom left corner pretty much saying you have not lied on this document after you do that over here in the bottom right corner you're going to hit go it's going to give you a receipt with again the location you picked address phone number time date all that good stuff registration id this is pretty much a receipt for you you've got the option to print or save I would recommend saving it either to phone, tablet, whatever you might be taking with you, or print it up and take it with you. Now, I haven't had anybody tell me this, but I always err on the side of caution. I don't want you to get up there, then go, well, we don't see anything in our system where you filled this out. This way you have your receipt, all right? But that's my recommendation with the receipt. Once you're done, you can click done, close everything out, okay? That is the new application process if your instructor happens to be doing it this way. If it, you're coming to me, I'm doing it this way. It's just so much easier. Now we're going to talk about renewing. When it comes time to renew 
your application or your permit, I should say. Again, you'll come back to Identigo. Go through SLED like you did if you want to, or if you bookmark this page into your favorites, come back here. You're still gonna click on schedule new appointment, but you will not have to go to Identigo or anything. That's only for the new application. But to go through this process, you still gotta click on schedule new appointment. Again, you will select concealed weapons permit. You'll hit go. When you get here, you're gonna select CWP renewal application. It'll be your second option. And this is also why you will not have to go there because this will walk you through it. Once you select it, hit go. Now, of course, they're gonna make all this look convoluted. A lot of this also has to do if you're printing everything up and mailing it in, but it is not this convoluted as they make it look. Just hit go in the bottom left corner, punch in your CWP number, punch in your social security number, hit go. You'll go back through that application just like what I showed you in the new application process. You'll fill it out, you'll submit it, and then it's just a waiting game. That waiting game can depend on how busy SLED is at the particular time you put this in to be processed. I've seen some get them in three weeks, I've seen some get them in 90 days. It really kind of varies just on how busy they are. Now, let's move over to replacements. Replacements meaning lost, stolen, damaged, name change, or address change. If it is a name change and or address change, you have to do your driver's license first, then your permit. If you try to do this before you do your driver's license, they confirm everything with the DMV database, you'll get a rejection letter or email saying you've got to update your driver's license. During this process, do not, do not get caught carrying on your person with your driver's license and your carry permit not having the same name and address. That falls under improper carry and you can be arrested. If you are convicted of that, it is a felony. Okay, so be very careful. But now I will say turnaround time on these replacements. Uh, I spoke to my brother when he did his, I think he said it took like three, four days. That's mailing it, then processing it, mailing it back. So it's not like you're gonna be without your gun for a long time, but you still be able to keep it in your vehicle in the glove box or the console. If you aren't aware of those spots or some of the other spots, please go check out my video where I talk about where you can have a loaded gun round in the chamber ready to go inside your vehicle with and without a permit. All right, that video is available on the YouTube page as well. But same thing, schedule new appointment, concealed weapons, or concealed weapons permit, and then the last option, CWP replacement process. Hit go, again, they make it look convoluted. Hit go, punch in the CWP number, punch in the social, hit go, walk through the application, submit it, and then you just gotta wait for them to get your new one. Now, if it is something where it's lost or stolen, or damaged where you can't read the number or you don't remember your CWP number, you can contact SLED and they will be able to go over and get your CWP number so you can go through this process. They'll go through some verification with you, but they'll be able to get that. Now, one thing I wanna talk about real quick while we're on this, the permits are good for five years, okay? They will have an expiration date on them just like your driver's license. I recommend going to that expiration date in your phone, tablet, or computer calendar. Count 90 days, 75 to 90 days back from that expiration date, set yourself a reminder, okay? That way you get all this in before it expires. If something happens and you go past the expiration date, you've got 18 months past the expiration date to renew it online. After those 18 months, you would have to print that paperwork up and mail it in. Now, quick note on that, on that paperwork, it's gonna ask for your instructor name and instructor number. Don't worry about that, because up at the top, you need to check renewal, not new. Okay, the renewals, you don't need that information. It's just there because they use the same sheet. Other thing, if you start the renewal process before it expires, keep that receipt if it happens to go past the expiration date and you can still carry on your person. But if you start the renewal process after it expires, you have to wait to carry on your person once your new permit gets there.
So again, as long as the renewal process starts before it expires, you can carry on your person, keep that receipt showing where you started that process. If it is after your permit has expired, you have to wait for your new permit before you can carry on your person. All right, I wanted to go over this because they have changed it a little bit and I wanted to get it updated and out there for my students as well as other people that might want to check this out. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope this helps you out and helps you understand a little bit more about that new process. If you ever have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is available on my website, which is also down in the description here. SLED's website will also be in the description here. But again, Again, feel free to reach out to me if you ever need help or ever have questions. If I don't answer or respond right away, please bear with me. I might be teaching with a class or working with a client. But always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.